Sam holding. Now starts his move, spinning, fadeaway jumper off the glass. It's good. The bank is open. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kepp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to talk about three of the greatest power forwards of all time. Tim Duncan, Karl Malone and Charles Barkley. And see if Tim Duncan is actually the greatest power forward of all time. But before we dive into today's episode, I want to ask you guys for a small favor. Subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. Also, if you want to support this channel in a different way, I got a new brand coming out called Old School Ballers. And I got some new fan merchandise of this collection. So check it out underneath the video to purchase your shirt today. All right, you guys, enough said. Now let's dive right into today's episode. You give me Parrish and Mikhail and DJ, I'm going to be all right. You better than Duncan? So, how do we start? I would say let's first take a look at the accomplishments of Tim Duncan. In 1997, Tim Duncan was the first pick of the San Antonio Spurs at the NBA Draft. Looking back, the major injury David Robinson had one year prior turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Having their worst season in 1996, they now would get the most promising player of his draft class. The Spurs were always a team that would compete for a championship, but David Robinson alone was not enough to finally win the big one. When Duncan arrived in San Antonio, it was the revival of the Twin Towers, aka Hakeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson back in the mid-80s for the Houston Rockets. Duncan and Robinson jailed right from the get-go, and Timmy showed that even as a rookie, he was good enough to hang with the best players in the entire league. Also, David Robinson was happy to finally get some help and not having to carry the team all by himself. As a rookie, Duncan was already a finished product, amazing his teammates with his maturity and high basketball IQ. I was learning from him. I, he came in with a, a tremendous skill set. I was incredibly impressed. I cannot overstate that really within two years, he was one of the top players in the league. Oh, oh, oh. This guy is everything that you want in a basketball player. In 1999, Tim Duncan helped the San Antonio Spurs to win their first NBA championship. And from this point onwards, Duncan was an NBA superstar. Year by year, he would not only make the all-star team, the all-defense team, but San Antonio would also win four more championships with Tim Duncan as their anchor. The one thing that was always outstanding to me was that Duncan always performed no matter how bright the stage. He played in the golden age of power forwards against Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin Garnett, Chris Webber, Rasheed Wallace, Karl Malone, but he would never back down and always rise to the occasion. It's time to celebrate San Antonio. The Spurs have captured their fifth NBA championship. If you thought because Timmy didn't show a lot of emotions or had a poker face a lot that he wasn't a great competitor, you, like nothing could be farther from the truth. There was nothing you could do to intimidate him. He wasn't ready to, to, to play against Tim Duncan. He would destroy you. Against Nowitzki, three seconds, Duncan shoots, guys, and the Spurs win! He was one of the best all-around players, I think, that, that we have seen. And of course, on the defensive end, he was a force. Now let's take a quick look at Charles Barkley and Karl Malone, starting with Sir Charles. Charles Barkley was the most exciting power forward of his era. Undersized, but still able to grab 12 plus rebounds every night, run coast to coast and stuff the ball on the other end. He was the 1993 MVP and helped the Phoenix Suns to make it to the NBA Finals. 
He had a devastating postgame and could overpower even bigger players. He never won an NBA championship, but he also played in the Jordan era. Not that this is an excuse, but many other legends suffered the same consequence. Which brings me to Karl Malone, a forward that was so powerful that he could push literally everyone around. He had a soft touch and was the master of the pick and roll. And despite his large body, he was super quick in transition and one of the best running forwards of all time. He was a two-time MVP even in the Jordan era and helped the Utah Jazz to make two finals appearances. Before we take a look at their accolades, let's see how their matchups turned out when they played against each other. And here we will see some really interesting facts when Karl Malone and Tim Duncan played. Karl Malone obviously was not in his prime, but still I have to mention he really had a hard time with Tim Duncan. Not only would the Jazz lose most of their games, but also Duncan would outplay Karl Malone in most of the games. This we can also see when we take a look at their stats. Unfortunately, we never got the chance to see how Malone would have played against Duncan when Malone was in his prime. Now when we take a look at how Charles Barkley did, you will see something really interesting. Barkley was really out of his prime when he played against Duncan. But when they played against each other, Barkley would give Duncan a run for his money. Timmy had a hard time stopping Barkley in the post. It seemed like Barkley would always be a little too fast for him. Again, it would have been really interesting to see how Barkley would have performed in his prime, but even in his older age, he was still performing on a high level against the young Tim Duncan. Now when we take a look at the accolades of each player, we will see that it's not even close, especially on the defensive end, starting with Charles Barkley. He was the MVP of the league, an 11-time NBA All-Star, but not once on the all-defensive team. Carmelone, on the other hand, surpasses Barkley with his accolades and really won everything but an NBA title and the Defensive Player of the Year. Great accolades, Carl. But Tim Duncan, in all honesty, is on another level. Not only is he a five-time NBA champ, but he was also the Defensive Player of the Year. 15 times on the all-defensive team. I mean, this is just crazy. And if you follow my show on a regular basis, then you know that I'm very high on two-way players. And Karl Malone was a more than solid defender. Charles Barkley was all right on defense, but Tim Duncan defensively was just a different better than category. Duncan. No, Tim Duncan's the greatest power forward ever. He had a lot of help. He did, but he was dominant. But he, did, what's he do better than you? Uh, he's a better post-up player because it's easier for him to score. Like, yeah, but you were a better scorer. Uh, only because I got the ball more. You got to understand something. There's guys. See, there's some. There's some guys uh, who we call them studio gangsters. They on a bad team and average a lot of numbers. They're just the best player on a bad team and get the ball more. Who's better, the big fundamental, Tim Duncan, or the mailman, Carl Malone? One of the most difficult who's better I have ever done. Who's better? Tim Duncan. He's better because basketball is about what? Winning. Did the Utah Jazz win consistently? Yes, they did. Did they get to NBA Finals? Yes, they did but they never close the deal. That will haunt my good friend, the mailman. Tim Duncan, different story. Multiple championships, he's stacking up trophies, and leadership is just off the yin yang. A little hip hop for you. One of the best leaders I have ever seen play the game of basketball in terms of unselfishness. Carl showed it with his effort and not missing games. Played in about 98% of the games presented to him. But Tim Duncan, he'll go down as probably the best power forward to ever play in the game. And in this comparison, he's better. There's probably never been an all-time great who, who had as little fanfare and, and, and asked for as little fanfare as he did. What was it like being on the floor with him? He's the most stable, great player in the history of the NBA, on and off the floor. You won't see another guy play 20 straight years for the same team and make the playoffs each year. Tim Duncan was the best defensive player also with rebound the basketball and also for a seven foot guy, his touch, his 15, 18 foot bank shot, facing up playing against smaller guys and against larger guys. Usually the seven foot guy, Greeny, dominated you by dunks. Tim Duncan dominated you by skill, and that's what helped make him be an all-time great.
I have to agree, even though Charles Barkley and Carmelo were incredible power forwards and were super special, Tim Duncan surpasses them with his all-around game. So can we call him the best power forward of all time? I think so. You know, the first power forward that I fell in love with was Charles Barkley. I just love the way how he played. So in my heart, I love Charles Barkley more than any power forward of all time. But Tim Duncan, objectively, was simply the greatest. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and get your old school baller shirt today. And I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.